Hi everyone, today we're making okara mojis. If you like me who makes tofu and soya milk on a regular basis, you probably have a few bags like this in your freezer somewhere and don't know what to do with it. Or worse, you've thrown them away. This is okara, this is soya bean pulp. It's a byproduct you get uh, when you make tofu and soya milk. But this is much more than a byproduct. It's extremely nutritious and delicious. You can use it to do all sorts of things. So a while ago, I made a video on how to use okara to make really fantastic okara biscuits. If you haven't seen the video, make sure you watch it. I'll put a link down below as well. But today we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to use okara to create really, really delicious mochi pancakes. They're kind of in between. So I call them mochi and pancake, but it doesn't matter. They're delicious and you're gonna love them. These mochis we're going to make today are so good. You'll probably go out of a way to make tofu and soya milk more often so you can end up with more okara to make this recipe. And that's how good they are. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do it. The ingredients you need. First of all, we need some okara, some fresh okara. So this is just freshly out of the freezer. It's still quite cold, but we can use this as it is. So it depends on how you create your okara. If you hand squeeze with cheese clocks, your okara will probably contain a lot more moisture than mine. I use a slow juicer to produce this, so it's very dry. If you want to know how I make tofu, please watch my how to make tofu video. It's on my channel and I'll put a link down below as well. And we need some soy flour. So just to make it quite clear, this is raw soya flour. Sometimes you see products that's called kinago. Kinago is basically toasted soya flour. That's not what we want. We want raw soya flour. And we also need some psyllium husk powder. And this is really vegan's best friend. And also if you're on keto or gluten-free, this is a mask when it comes to baking and a lot of different recipes. But as I explained a couple of videos before, this is fundamentally fiber, but it functions like gluten in flour. It makes everything sticky. It kind of binds your dough together. This is fantastic stuff. And we also need some vegan mayonnaise. You can use a different brand, of course. And um, this is my favorite brand. So if you don't have it, you can probably get away with really thick vegan yogurt. But the flavor will be slightly different. You can try it. And uh, so this recipe is okara mochi with leeks. We need some leeks. You just need a small section. You don't need a huge quantity. And also, instead of leeks, you can use spring onion if you wish. Spring onion, I think it's uh, scallion in America. They kind of, you know, have similar flavor. Not the same, but similar. And for the dipping sauce, and yes, we're going to have dipping sauce. We're going to need some soya sauce and some toasted sesame oil. This is gorgeous. Small amount of ginger and a fresh chili. And this is all you need. Oh, and I forgot, you also need some milk. Ideally, if you have soy milk, freshly made soy milk, use that. But I drank all my soy milk, so I'm going to use almond milk instead. We just need a small amount, so it doesn't matter. You can use any kind of nut milk or coconut milk or soy milk. So making the moji dough is really, really easy. Other than the ingredients for the dipping sauce, we're gonna put the rest of the ingredients into one single bowl and then mix it. And that's it. Okay, let's do it. So the first thing I'm gonna pop in is the fresh okara. So I've got 120 grams here of fresh okara. Let's pop it in there. And then we're going to add in about 40 grams of soya flour. So it's about 40 grams. And the next thing we're going to add is 10 grams of psyllium husk powder. And then within the mixture, we're going to add in about three to four tablespoons of mayonnaise. So it's about three to four tablespoons. And once the mayonnaise has gone in, we're going to add just a small pinch of salt, really just a small pinch. You don't want to over season it because we have the dipping sauce. So just a small pinch of salt. And here I've got thinly sliced leeks. So you just slice it very, very thinly like this. So they almost flake up. I'm going to add some of it now and then see how it goes and add more later. So probably around this much. And now we're going to add in 
the liquid. So I'm not going to add a whole lot in one go. I'm going to add bit by bit and watch the consistency and decide how far I want to go. So I'm going to pour in probably about half of it and then take the spatula and start mixing it. So it really depends on how much moisture you've got in your car as well. You might need to add more or less of the milk. So I'm using a spatula now. When it gets firm enough, I'm going to use my hands. So that's my hand in that. It feels quite wet. Well, first of all, I'm going to add in the rest of the leaks. I think it's okay. If it feels too wet, then you can add a bit more soya flour. And if it's too dry, add a bit more liquid. The consistency you're aiming at is something that you can handle in your hand and make into a little moji shape. So I might need a little bit more flour. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of a soy flour. So fill your dough and decide whether to add the dry ingredients or the liquid. Okay, it's now turned into a, a nice little ball. So in between, I actually added a little bit more soya flour and a little bit of a psyllium husk as well, just to balance it out. So you can make the judgment call. So that's your little moji ball here. So now what I'm going to do is to divide it into eight little portions. Okay, so now we have this dough ready here. I'm going to divide it into eight equal portions or as equal as possible. So I'm going to just cut it in half first and then quarter it. And then half each portion again. So you end up roughly eight portions. And now I'm going to just quickly turn them into individual patties. So I'm going to make it round first and then give it a little press as I go along and just sh shape it into a little sort of burger shape like this. I mean, it's so much fun just to handle something so soft and moist. So that's the little, little karamochi here. And just do the same with the rest of them. I love the aroma of leeks and spring onions. It's so pungent, it's so fragrant. So there you go, the second one. These are so, so easy to make. You know, they're great for starters or snacks. And the great thing is pretty keto as well, because you probably notice I use soy flour. It goes with the theme with the soybean, but also soy flour has got much lower carb content than regular flour and it's extremely nutritious as well. So there you go, that's another one. So now we have eight equally sized and shaped moji pancakes ready to be fried. But before we fry them, we're going to make the dipping sauce first. So to make the dipping sauce, first of all, we're gonna take the ginger here and slice into really thin strips. And by the way, please don't take the skin off. That's where all the nutrient is. So keep the skin on. Just try to slice it as thinly as possible and then strip them into this little ginger strips like this. And then we're going to just pop it in there for now. And then take your chilli. If you don't like chilli, then don't put it in there, but I like it. So I'm going to, the simplest way just to slice them thinly like this into little rings. I love fresh chili. You know, I just come alive when I smell fresh chili. So I'm gonna just pop in some of it here. So you can add more chili if you want. Do you know how hard these are? I have no idea. So I'm being conservative. I'm gonna just put a little bit and um, we're gonna put this aside and now we're going to fry our little mojis. Okay, so now we're ready to fry our little mojis. Take some olive oil 
and then just pour some into a frying pan. So I'm gonna fry four at a time and now I'm gonna turn the heat on to about medium to strong and give it a little swirl like this. Make sure the frying pan is covered with oil evenly. So now I'm going to pop in four of these gorgeous little moji pancakes. Just place them like that. And have your spatula ready. So what we want to do now is to brown the moji on both sides. Okay, that's one. It's perfect. How cute are they, really? And it's got kind of green bits of leaks coming through as well. They're so, so cute. Okay, I'm gonna quickly brown the other side. And then what I'm gonna do is add some surprise water. It's called Bikurimitsu. It basically, I'm gonna add some cold water in there cover it and then allow it to steam. So once the other side is brown, let me just have a quick check. Okay, that's perfect. So now what you want to do is I have a lid ready, right? Lid that, that can cover the frying pan. So what you want to do is to have a couple of tablespoons. I, I have just about under half a cup. And what you want to do is have a lid ready and then have the water in one hand you just splash the water like this. And then cover it. Okay, it's gonna look slightly scary, but if you have if you have your lid ready, it shouldn't be a problem. As soon as you, you add the water, you just cover it. Um, probably need a bigger lid. You can add a bigger lid if you want to. I'm gonna use this one. So it's got more room for it to steam. It's a very similar technique to cooking gyoza if you have a cook uh, gyoza dumpling because it's quite thick in the middle so if you're just relying on browning on both sides the middle is going to be raw so what you want to do is to create this really strong steam until it's done in the middle as you can see now the water is bubbling up just wait till the water is almost gone okay it's done now we're going to open it perfect And now what we want to do is to allow it to grow a little bit longer until it's crispy on both sides. Okay, I think these are ready to come out. I'm just going to plate them up. They're so cute. And smell so, so good. Now we're going to finish up the dipping sauce and just drizzle some soy sauce in there and a sprinkle of the toasted sesame oil. That's our dipping sauce. You can add some rice vinegar in there if you want to. It would be quite a classic dipping sauce for a gyoza, but today I'm going to do without. So there you go. And that's our mochi here and dipping sauce. That's our okara moji pancake with leeks. So there you go. Okara mochi pancake, whichever, with leeks. I mean, aren't they just adorable? So I'm going to show you what it's like inside. So it's really moist and fluffy. I'm going to have my dipping sauce. I hope the chili isn't too hot. So ideally, you want to have a little bit of ginger with it as well. But I'm going to just dip it with the sauce now. Mm. Oh, it's like eating velvet. It's so soft and moist. It's so fluffy. And you can taste the sweetness of okara. And the leeks, just wonderful. Mm. I'm going to have a piece of mochi and layer it with some chili. And some ginger. There you go. Oh, so, so good. So, so good.
it takes about half an hour to make so you can nut them up quickly and you have this wonderful fluffy moji pancakes so i hope you enjoy this recipe and please try it at home these are really really good seriously i know i say that every time but these are really good i can eat them every day so if you like more okara recipes please let me know please comment below so i know you like them and i'll make more of them so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you next time